my name is Fuad Ahmed. I'm a D1 at Case Western Reserve University, and uh, this is the school. I hope to see you guys next year here. I am originally from Syria. However, I've been in Ohio for around 10 years now, and I went to Ohio State University for undergrad. I majored in psychology and I minored in biology. Yep. And my main extracurriculars were lifting and I also was a part of the Arab Student Union and the Organization of Student Arabs where we also got to participate in things like Debke classes which is Arabic line dancing through Art of Freedom uh, troop, shout out AOF and as well as Buckeye Serve. Um, Buckeye Serve was amazing like all the service trips that we like went on and we could help all the people it was like an amazing club and of course pre-dental club uh was also a very fun club when i first moved to ohio from syria which was like 10 years ago the first healthcare profession that i interacted with was the uh, dentist and the dentists that i interacted with were also arab so that also like made me more interested in it because I saw people who like looked like looked like me and uh, had like I had a lot of respect for and they actually helped me a lot they made like a big impact on my life because a few years after my first visit I actually discovered that I had three extra teeth apart from my wisdom teeth so I had the four wisdom teeth and then I had three extra teeth so I believe like one here one here and then maybe one here and they just had to do like a huge surgery. And once they took them all out, I just like, all of my headaches were just like gone. And I just wanna like help people get that same feeling because like going from like headaches all the time to no headaches at all, that just like, it's so, it was so impactful for my life. Like even my grades went up and just like everything just like, just like became clear. Like my life just like really like actually changed. And apart from like helping people and just being in a I always I always knew that I wanted to be like in a healthcare profession and when I once I saw like dentistry I knew that was like that was my calling. So first I set out two and a half months but then I had an infection and the death in the family and that sent me back like a week or so. So I had to like move the date. But in total, it was like around, I want to say like three months something, but I was procrastinating at the start. So what I did for that was that I just like deleted all the apps on my phone, like even like deleted my social media, basically like even the accounts, like temporarily like stop them and just forget your phone like at home. In the morning, you just wake up, shower and then go like drink your coffee or whatever. You don't even like, as long as you just like head out of the house, like as fast as possible. Go to, like the coffee shop, the library, like anywhere you want to study, and like I would like switch places. Like so, like in one day, sometimes I would go to, like four libraries. Like it was just like OSU had that many libraries, so like I was able to like let's say if you're from OSU, you would go to, like Thompson, the big library, and then I would go to 18th, and then I would go to the coffee shop, something like that, and just like keep doing that um, as many times as possible. And then for studying, studying, like what actually I did was that was that um. I would take the practice problems from Booster and whatever I got wrong or whatever I felt like a little shaky on, I would just make physical flashcards and as well for the videos that they had, that was also important to take flashcards on. So I had like at the end like a 1,500 physical flashcard, like big bag of just like information that I had to know for DAT and that's what I studied from. And I would say that's like the best tip is just like go out get the flashcards that you need. I don't care if they're Anki like, or physical. I prefer physical because I just like have to remember it to like write it out. You're not just copy pasting, copy pasting. And you just have to go through them at the end of the night and just like leave the house as fast as possible. I think that's like the best thing. And just like remember that if you need to like take more time, it's better for you because your application is gonna be like, look, look a little bit more better. So let's say like most people, I would say like, probably like score around 19 like let's say if you take like an extra week or so of just doing practice like practice tests wouldn't that look better if you had a 20 on your application than that so just like thinking in averages
first of all, the activities. Um, so I followed Ryan Gray's method. Um, there were like a lot of books that he had on like how to do the personal statement, how to do the activities, what to do during the interview, and I used these uh, to my advantage, but this within the dental realm. Um, I had a lot of activities like three service trips. Um, one of them was international. I was uh, captain for two intramural teams, and as well, I was like very into lifting, and I included that and just like how that changed my life, especially that I lost uh, a ton of weight. Um, and then communication wise, you can like, what I did was I talked to an ex faculty at a dental school um, here actually at Case, and he was just like telling me like where to apply, how to apply, stuff like that, and what most schools like really expect from us. And what he was basically telling me was just like, you just have to like talk to them, just like call them up. And that's exactly what I did. I called them, I got the secretary on the phone, and she was just like, all right, you're just gonna like email. Uh, the admissions uh, like office, so the dean of admissions can see your email because he's the one who like reviews them. And then from there, I was able to secure my interview after. And after the interview, I was uh, I wrote a very long email about like how I'm excited to be in the school. It wasn't very long. I would say like three big paragraphs that were like very well written, like very thought out, not long. I would say very thought out. And I think that's what really like set me apart. Like ma ma mainly just like communication. Communication was very key. I had two interviews and they were both on separate days. It was online. So the first interview was with Dr. Sherman, who is the Dean of Admissions here at Case Western. And the interview was like very like simple, just like asking about like very simple questions, honestly, like way easier than I thought. And I would say he's probably like one of the nicest admissions officers I've ever talked to. Um, and like just nicest people I've talked to in general, like honestly, like even people who went to other schools that were like, this admissions officer is like probably the coolest admissions officer we've interviewed with. Um, and the, it was just like, it was just great having the interview with uh, Dr. Brian Sherman. And then uh, with Dr. Ochenero, it was my second interview, who was a uh, faculty at Case Western, but he's now retired. And basically at the start, he was just like, kind of grilling me, like, you know, like, why didn't you do this? Or like, what about this? And just like, just like trying to get to the bottom of things as fast as possible. So he was very like straightforward. However, like, as we like went into the conversation, he just like started asking me like those, I want to say probing questions and like, basically stuff like, what did you learn from your like parents? What did you learn from your mom? What did you learn from your dad? And he started like more relating to that and he got nicer over like, over the period of time. We had 30 minutes set out, but the interview went to like an hour, 15 minutes, I would say. And we just started talking about like family and food and just like what he like, like what, what he liked about like, let's say the area here, because that's what I usually ask people um, when, I inter like, when I interview with someone. And it was just like a great interview day, honestly. Went way better than I expected and it was just like easy flowing. The main thing about the interview is to actually be yourself, um, be prepared and just focus on like three things that you think set you apart from everyone else. Make sure you know like all of your activities, like if you need even like have your resume printed out or like just like a timeline of some sort. And I believe that you have to like engage the interviewer as much as possible. And one of the ways I did that was that at the end of it, like every interview that I've had was that I would ask the admissions officers or whoever was interviewing me, um, what the hidden gem that they saw here at Case Western was. So a lot of people were just like, there's a lot of places in Little Italy that they liked. Uh, for example, Dr. Ochenero told me that he liked Etna a lot and uh, a lot of the Italian places here. And I think that just like helped, helped me like connect with him more on like more than just a, these are my academics, these are my activities and just like boom, boom, boom. It was just like more of like a natural conversation, not just like just focusing on like GPA, DAT, you know what I'm saying. 
I chose Case Western for many different reasons. Basically, it has all the specialties I want and it's very close to home because I am from Cleveland, so my parents are right there. And also, we do a lot of like uh, community work. So for example, we have the sealant program that we go into uh, like schools around the area and then we just like help out the children and just apply sealants for uh, the kids who go there. No more guidance. So before, you used to have a guidance counselor that used to like guide you through everything, tell you like, oh, do this to get into the dental school, do this, do this, and then once you get into dental school, it's really not that way anymore. You just have your set, like, just set uh, classes, and then you just do them, and that's all you need to, like, graduate, apart from boards and stuff like that. However, like, you also need to, like, make sure that you know what you want to do, because you're the one who wants to do the residency, so you have to, like, take to be in charge of that. You have to be in charge of your own life. And this is like a big part of adulting as well. So apart from that, we also have the fact that you do not have to do all the extra curriculars that you had to do before. So you didn't have to do, you don't have to do research if you don't want to. You don't have to join clubs if you don't want to. Like all of these activities you don't have to like do because you're already in. However, these activities like make your life fuller. They make your life more enjoyable. So why not do them? if you have time but the main goal now is just to focus on studying get your grades right and pass the boards and that's it but just focus on maintaining your health at the same time so don't forget to maintain your health sleep right eat right drink your water and just live a happy life in the end we have a lot of days where it's like 10 to 3 something like that and we have the 12 to 1 uh, lunch hour built within so basically when we have eight o'clock it's usually for like small group stuff and we have that I want to say like twice every week sometimes a bit more depends on the class and uh, after that we have a lecture at 10 to 11:50, and then we have the 12 to 1 uh, block for lunch then after that we usually have another two to two and a half hour lecture and then we usually go home or like you can go study and a lot of people study because the stuff is hard so basically i really suggest that you just like go with like starbucks or the hec also has like a lot of study rooms or just go to the library somewhere and just study and yeah that's basically the average day and we just like throw in like an hour and a half of the gym every uh i want to say every four days like four days a week and that's about it. The faculty is amazing, the staff is amazing, the admissions team is amazing, especially like how they took us from the undergraduate level to the dental school level and so smoothly. I believe that that helped a lot. And my favorite thing obviously is my classmates. Um, they're very supportive and the environment is very inclusive. So that's like basically like my favorite part about the school and literally like it's a very, very inclusive environment. And someone the other day was literally saying like, this is literally like the, de like the definition of diversity and just like how it's like all like cohesive and just like everything like, like just works, worked out so well. Uh, so like, I really like want to shout out the admissions team as well as my classmates. Be yourself. If you want to join a club that does not pertain to dentistry, join it. As long as you're passionate about it, as long as like, let's say you really like a hobby, like go pursue that. Because once you go to the, like once you go to the interviews, you're gonna have you're gonna need something to talk about. It's not gonna be just DAT, DAT and GPA. Um, there's a lot of things that you can talk about, and when they hear the passion and when they like when you communicate that passion to them you're going to be able to separate yourself from the crowd of just like some people who like may not be as passionate about the things that they were talking about in the activities list. So just be yourself. All right. Thank you guys for watching. This was Fouad Ahmed from uh, Case Western Dental D1. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to me at Instagram uh, at Fouad999. So F-O-U-A-D 999. F-O-U-A-D 999. All right. Thank you guys so much and I hope to see you guys next year.